welcome everybody to the Tuesday, November 1st, 2022 meeting of the Conway Select Board. And um, I guess it will be a joint meeting with the Capital Improvements Committee. And uh, call the meeting to order. First item, vote to approve the minutes of October 24th. We'll say, I think Adam outdid himself on these. Really good. Yeah, so I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. Aye. All, all in favor? Yeah, yeah whatever. Um, <laughs> Eric is all in favor? Uh, all, right, all in favor? <laughs> Aye. It's unanimous. Um, you know, warrants, meetings attended by select board members. It was, it's just been a week since the last one. Um, So nobody had, there wasn't really. I had one uh, capital improvements meeting. Ah, very good. Very good. I don't know what, I don't remember what I have. It's nothing but meetings. Um, any public comments? Hello. Um, all right, so we'll just get knock out the unfinished business to vote to adopt changes in the town personnel handbook. So we've talked about this stuff before here for a vote. Uh, um, there's a few changes to streamline our process or eliminate some of the things that were bumps in the road. The grievance procedure is basically being um, eliminated. Uh, the um, changing the or adding language in the hiring process to allow for internal postings. Um, we're deleting the requirement of performance evaluations. And we are adding on the personal leaves of absence category, uh, a leave for the purpose of donating blood. It seems very appropriate because it's Halloween. So there you go. Um, <laughs> So, um, Ronnie, do you want to give a brief, a brief I remember reminder to people why we're doing those things? Sure. Yeah, it's basically because we, I, um, some of them like the grievance and the performance evaluations and the WISP, we had it in the policy, but we haven't got the background documents to actually do those things yet. So it seemed to me we kind of put the cart before the horse and that, you know, I'd like to review all that and then get you know forms for doing that if the select board chooses to do it. But it just seemed good to take it out of the policy for now until it's kind of buttoned up. And then of course the donating blood was passed not that long ago. And then the internal hiring um, is just allowing us to do that for a couple of weeks. Um, I, I agree with those changes. So I'm, I'm open. Anybody have any other comments about that? There you vote. <clears throat> Motion to approve the changes in the personnel handbook. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Um, Alan is not on. Roy is on. Roy is on, but it, this is just capital. It's not finance. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, so who's the chair of the capital committee, Bob? That would be me. Ah. Just, I'm, 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 so you get right here. So we're going to start the just start the joint meeting with the capital committee. Unless, since Jan's here, do you want to do transfers? Do you want to do the appointment or, first? Or if you want to Corey, because Corey. Corey's here. All right. You to... Corey. <laughs> All right, Corey. There, so there's a proposal to hire Corey Skinner as full time temporary employee in the highway department, unbenefited from November 2022 through April 2023. Is that your understanding of? That is. Okay. And this is something you want to do. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, my name is Philip. This is Erica. And this is Chris. We're the select board of Congress. So, um, That's me, guys. Hey, likewise. <laughs> likewise. And um, so I'll make a motion to hire Corey Skinner. I'll As a full-time temporary employee in the highway department, unbenefited from November 2022, uh, which I guess is tomorrow, um, through today. today, yeah, April 20th through April. I'm sorry, April 2023. 
I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Oh, you too. Thanks for stopping. Yeah, sure. Okay. Earlier better or later? Uh, I'm, I'll be here at 8 o'clock. Okay. Um, I'm meeting with Karen. Uh, okay. If, you want, if that works for you, that would be great right too. I'll, I'll probably be gone, but I can give you a call. What time would you be leaving? Uh, seven ish, probably. Can you just leave a few minutes early and stop down the garage? Yeah, that's no problem. Okay, perfect. Nice to meet everyone again. You too. Thanks. Thank you. So, J Jan, I mean, you're the transfer station. We have a lot to talk about. So, I mean, is it all right with you if we spend a few minutes doing the capital stuff first? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I've okay. got work to do because I figured right. I was Thanks. further down. Thanks. The Thanks. All right. So, um, mm -hmm. Chris, you can call your committee to order and we can have our joint meeting. Okay. Um, I will call to order the uh, committee on um, capital improvements planning to order. Uh, I am Chris Waldo, the chair. We have Bob Armstrong and uh, Roy Cohen with us as well. Hi, Roy. All right. Can you hear us, Roy? Sorry, it was muted like the commercial. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there are um, there's three capital. I guess there's four capital four capital items. If you want to count the frontier thing as a capital item, even though there's no dollar amount to it, right? It's a vehicle for there to be dollar amounts attached to it in the future. Um, and. Uh, I think Bob probably knows from the many school capital committee meetings that he was on that it's something that we've wanted to do that some of us, like me, have wanted to do for years. Um, so, and that's the whole idea. What what the article does not, I, yeah, where, where'd you get the language for the article about the, uh, the article number one? From Darius. Um, because, what it, what it doesn't really make clear is that the capital stabilization would be, would be fund would be funded in the same percentages as the town is assessed based on that whole complicated complicated formula which is has a lot to do with the amount of students in it and right now we're at 17%. So I don't and I guess that's something that we'll just have to explain to people but a lot of people are going to my guess is people are going to want to see that in writing. Um, that that the reason that there's no dollar amounts attached to it now are because this a the frontier school committee hasn't voted on any dollar amounts and b it has to all be done at the four four towns sort of simultaneously or within the same month or whatever because um, there has to be an expenditure and then we would get we would be you know putting 17 percent of that desired expenditure into capital stabilization mm -hmm. um you know or, um, and, or if you decide to just like however they decide to fund it it's going to be based in some way on that so a lot of times they do it they just want a general funding of it and then they'll have a separate article for things they want to spend in it but um but that's the thing that I just wanted to make clear to everybody that yeah, they're the only one is a shared fund. It, we don't we don't have a separate Conway. We do have a separate so, Conway Grammar School no, stabilization no, fund. We, we, but, but this is frontier. This, it is frontier. Is frontier. It is frontier, but we're only responsible for 17%, right? This year. We only have a shared one for frontier. We don't have a Conway one for frontier. Right. You, you know, yeah, then yeah. we can put money into an advance if we felt that we had you know, free cash or something that we could put put that aside that way and then move it from there into this. Uh, yeah, well, the problem with doing that is that there needs to be a mechanism that makes sure that we're only paying our fair share. When we move so, it into this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay, so yeah. Phil, you're saying there isn't the mechanism yet, so, which, which kind of um, will be interesting when the time comes for an assessment or however it is. So like like this year we're at 17%, right? Okay. Yeah. Well next year we might be at 15. Right. It does it does fluctuate year to year. We have yeah. been as high percent, we've been as low as 14%. So but it'll be interesting. So they're gonna have to have a formula for how 
like every, you know, if we if we're gonna the average, yeah, if we're gonna contribute, you know, every year and that thing fluctuates, then it's just gonna be complicated. Just something else for the uh, for the business manager, I guess, to to uh, figure out. But it's, I mean, by operation of law, we're only responsible for our fair share. Right. But and our I don't fair share, and that varies. Yeah, does vary but they try to smooth it out with that five-year rolling average thing i see well okay. you only put money into this fund when there's something to spend it on is that, that um that's what you said i uh, you know when I, I, I spoke with darius the other day and sure. they were talking about there, there are several different ways they're going to sources for this um that they're going to take it might be you know their e and d it might be it might be school choice that you know so i don't know that that's all been Iron and that, and I, like I'm personally, I've been pushing to put. So right now, the 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 school gets um, E and D, which is the same thing as free cash, um, and and by law they can't have more than five percent of their budget is E and D. They have to return that to the towns. But it's always been the practice of Frontier that they spend half of the E and D on operating expenses, and they return half of it to the towns, and they do that long after town meetings and the, all the budgets are done. They get no credit anywhere from anybody that they're returning these hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it barely has an impact on our finances because it's, uh, it, it's, that's just the timing of all that. And I've been, I've been advocating that they take that other half and instead of returning it to the towns, put it into capital stabilization. So, um, and are they going to do that? I, we you haven't had a vote yet. We don't have, we haven't had a vote yet. And yeah. either I'm able to persuade people or I, we lose, I lose 18 to one, but, but um, I'm okay with either one. So, <laughs> um, so this is just asking Conway if we favor the, I mean, I felt that we, when we talked about it, it was talk, the capital committee was talking about do we support a, a stabilization fund? Yeah. And we do. Yeah, I mean, I, when I look at that language, I see that second sentence in that article one, and I'm like, that is a confusing, inartful sentence, and I don't like it. But um, because what the, what the heck does it say? And what does it have to do with what we're voting on? And how does that a meaningful limitation on what we're doing? Like, whatever, it's, I don't know. So. Well, we can reword. Yeah, can or delete it. it, or just delete it. Um, yeah, our main purpose was the creation of the yeah. fund yeah. itself. Yeah, but not yeah. the language. Yeah, I mean that's change. it. Like I read that and I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. uh, that being the case, that might have come from the lawyer that some one the school lawyer says we have to do it. I don't know. Uh, So, and then I guess the next one for the capital committee to weigh in on is the article two, the pickup truck for the, right. for the fire department. And our recommendation was based on a, a few things. Um, one being, you know, Bob was originally looking at a new truck. Well, that new truck would take up to a year, if not more, um, from the date of purchase to actually receive. Because of that, the existing cost to maintain the current vehicle need to be added to the overall cost, not to mention all the issues of the current vehicle um, <clears throat> that's happening right now. You know, we, we personally don't think we should wait a, a, another year with all these issues, including what can be a, a replaced transmission. Um, so our recommendation was to go with the used vehicle. Um, but in the general sense, we do support the idea of a truck. Yes. You know, that, you know, um, that, the, that, that the boat has become important to Conway with, uh, with, with water rescues that they end up doing, with water rescues in Ashfield that they end up being called out for. Uh, and they carry the boat in a trailer that also contains a lot of other equipment when they go to a fire. So, so we've, we felt that Bob justified having a bigger vehicle than he has now to haul a bigger trailer that they can actually put the boat in. They only can fit the boat in the current trailer when it's, un when it's deflated. So they have to arrive at the scene and then inflate the boat. And, and uh, they would need a bigger trailer to really carry the boat 
fully inflated to arrive at this. Like they would like, they would rather keep it inflated, plus the other equipment that they take with them. So we supported the idea of, of Get it tomorrow, you know, basically. Whereas a new truck, it could be a year, a year and a half away until delivery. Uh, so then, yeah. we, and either one that we get, probably we would still have to add a lot of bells and whistles too, with lights and all the usual stuff that we add and the vehicle, fire vehicles when we buy them. And the used trucks, there were some good used trucks on the market that, you know, that were a good deal cheaper than a new truck. Okay, low mileage. Uh, Chief Baker said typical uh, mileage per year is only 4,000, so. I'd like to clarify something with that. Mm -hmm. I went back to the, through the fuel records mm -hmm. and in four years, he's only put 5,000 miles in. So it's very, very little use. Right. Well, it's not that far to the river. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh, uh, right. One of the things he said was that, that if, if somebody shows up with a bigger truck at, at the firehouse, uh -huh. they use that truck to haul the trailer rather than than his his fire vehicle. <clears throat> yeah, I know, I know. Um, so all right, and then So what would you show your vote was three nothing for use truck up to 50,000? That's right. So. All right. So, and then the next one was article three, your wood chipper, 92,000 for a new chipper. Right. And uh, Roy had brought up the idea of asking about um, parties, um, outside sources that are, you know, being used in other townships. Um, so we were presented with uh, Northern Tree Service um, pricing. Which is our current bid. Right. County, Franklin County. Say, did anybody, I had uh, sent the name, what was it, Jim's Tree? Did anybody talk to them? Just out of curiosity. No, I didn't speak to anybody other than getting the bid um, information from the fur card. Okay. Yeah, did you get that handout, Roy? I did email it to you. Yeah, I got. No, I got the uh, the fur card. Um, you know, the hourly rates there from the fur card seem seem fine. I don't think you'll find the hourly rates any any less. The only thing missing from the analysis, let's see, two twenty one day week per year. So 50, oh, so that, but this wasn't including, um, so our cost for this thing. So if we spent a hundred thousand on this thing and let's say maybe it'll last 10 years. So that's uh, 10,000 a year plus the labor to run it on our own plus any added workers comp insurance. So I don't know how that compares it to- would be annoying. Added insurance. Our insurance already covers what the highway department does. Doesn't matter what we're doing, we're covered. Well, what? Well, yeah. You know why they... that keeps getting thrown in there about what we do? We we rent chippers now. We already have to have that kind of insurance. Okay, but when they do this, the uh, the survey and setting the rate, they ask what kind of activities you do. And so, you know, you're supposed to tell them what you do. It's or, a pretty standard standard activity for highway departments, though. And right. a, a, a rate is set by our loss history. And right. well, amongst other things. Yeah. But I'll, I, I get the so our cost, you know, is uh, so it's not just. Uh, OK, this you're figuring here the cost to outsource the whole business completely to the fur cog. And that was what forty trees? Is that no? How? What was the? Uh, what was the estimate there? Uh, okay, the estimated hours. 
How many trees does that translate to? Do we know? I would assume it depends on the tree and the and the damage and the damage. Right, but there's some some average. And by by the way, I don't know if the internet's breaking up. Not, I don't think it's on my end, but anyway, um, I don't know if you still can hear me. I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> Not going to hire. Talk this chart. It's not you. It's chat anyway. Um, yeah. yeah, Roy. It's definitely not on our side. Oh, it's not, huh? No, because it it's them freezing up, not everybody else. Oh, okay, okay, Roy. Um, so okay, so I, I'm not going to argue the point. I mean, I, you know, uh, that's all. I wanted to see what it would cost to out, you know, to outsource this thing versus uh, buying the chipper and doing it ourselves. So, um, yeah, I mean, if there we have it. I mean, it seems seems like it costs a lot to outsource it, but I'm not- I'm, I'm looking at the line that says chipping and debris removal. Is that where I should be looking? Yes. And, and then, and if I add up the normal shift, it comes to 400 and almost 450 bucks an hour. Minus the 190. Oh, it's not including the 190. No, no, because that would be normal for us to do analyze. I, I see. Okay. Or not. So that's it comes true. to about 225. 25. Okay, so that's what the 225 is the sum of all of those, the upper line. And uh, and then, and so at one day per week, if we have to rent the thing one day per week, that would be the same as the cost of the chipper. Mm -hmm. Over the year. In, in one year so i mean in one year that's right yeah. Yeah. In, in one year it would cost us the same as the cost of the chipper okay that i wanted to make sure i i mean you, that that's you're, never, sense. you're never going to know when you it's a a, just an estimate on time but the way things have been going with the trees falling and the timeliness of cleaning up trees that, that we have to get into something that we we have never done before. Now the now the chipper's going to take us a year or a year and a half to get delivery on. Correct. Mm -hmm. So where's this money going to come from for the <laughs> for the the year that we don't have the chipper? I, Is it in your budget or? No, or, that's the problem. <laughs> it wasn't had none of this. Yeah. So you, right. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm worried so, about. For the coming year, I've talked to where we've been renting the chipper, and he's willing to rent it to me for two thousand dollars a month. That's a lot better than four hundred a day, which it has been until our chipper comes. Right. So that so then we would what we would be doing is saving up a whole lot of trees, and then we'd no, rent it for I a month. Have, from what I understand, I don't have that option. Well, no, two, two, two thousand each month. Each month. So he gets it for the whole month. I rent it. We have it. For right, but we only need it four days a month, right? I mean, here you talk about. Uh, it's basically what he did. A, a day he, per week. He gets four hundred dollars a day. But basically, what he did was figure five days in the month. Mm -hmm. We get. We'll have the chipper, so when we need it. We can use it at any time. But this estimate was based upon one day per week. The, uh, you know, only needing That's it. hiring somebody to come in. Yes, one day a week. Yes. And so we only need it one day a week. That's all he's basically charging me, $400. So it's $2,000 a month. So he's willing to rent me the chipper until we get ours. So, so hopefully you, we need to find a way for you to be allowed to save up a lot of trees and then chip like hell for a month. But no, the, that's the problem is it's not no. working that no. way right now. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, we no have, what, there's plenty of work for him. Yeah. There's plenty of work for him. It's all saved up. We got we're that in spades. When a tree comes down, we're not moving the stuff to a place where we can, I mean, I already the, the so, so at four thousand a month he would let you keep 2, a chipper 000. at two at two thousand a month he would let you keep the chipper here and that would end up being twenty four thousand a year for the year so that's a that's that's the huge savings mm -hmm. I see I like that I like that instead of buying one <laughs> yeah, right. well, he may not be willing to do that you know uh, whatever. Right. I mean 
the thing ain't new. It's a used one. Yeah. yeah. And the $92,000 one should last 10 years. So if you add 25 or 24,000 over 10 years, you're talking over two and a half mm -hmm. times the cost. Yeah. 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 So uh, let me ask okay. you a question. So, so based on these rates here from Northern Tree Service, it's, it's pretty much a new service you're going to be doing, right? With pretty all this much. tree work. How many more, how many new amount of personnel would you think you would need to do this service or can you maintain it with the current personnel you have? Well, my guess is we're going to have to maintain it with our current. Yeah. Uh, one person would make a huge, would be a huge help for what this is adding to our. What's the salary of one person? About 50 grand. So that's what I'm looking at. Plus so, so, yeah, so you looking at it that way, but that's, you're not gonna find some, hire somebody for one day a week. No, I know that. So I'm, what I'm looking at is saying, no matter what, more than likely you're gonna need to add a $50,000 a year salary. Subtract that from the 93 on here, right? For the year from the company that could provide the same, the same service without adding a chipper, without adding a box truck, right? So then you're down to 43,000 a year. So that's what I'm looking at. And that is a little... But you're not looking at it right. Okay. <laughs> because that person would only be doing one day a week. So that would benefit me in the other four days a week or three days a week, or as we work four days a week. Right to do other things that would be a huge help. That you need somebody for anyway. It would be very helpful, yes. Yeah. I'm not on the board here, but I would love to see you not, I would love to see you only working 40 hours a week since you're getting paid salary and you're not getting paid any overtime for the weekend that you work during the entire Festival of Hills this year, for example. Uh, it's just, it's not fair to you. So is your preference what ours probably is when it comes to the cost, of course, to rent this chipper for a year, still go for with trying to purchase a new chipper in the meantime until we can grab that. Most definitely. Because what's gonna happen is this chipper that he's gonna, it's that one that I've actually been renting from him. Um, if something happens to it and it may not make it through our year or, you know, He's not replacing it so he can rent us another one. It's it's basically a spare for him in his business. And he's willing because he doesn't uh, doesn't use it, but on occasion. One of the other parts of the deal is that if he does need it for something, that he can come and get it and use it. If we don't need it. Right. Well, he comes first, no matter right. what it's happens. Pro <laughs> rate that then. I was going to say it'll be an interesting <laughs> contract, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. I yeah. mean, obviously, he, if he comes and takes it where we can't use it, then that changes. For 2000 a month, he'll store his chipper here in Conway <laughs> yeah. for you to use when you need it, That's as easy. long as he hasn't had to use it somewhere else. Right. And Sounds like a great and deal, Ron. He doesn't. Doesn't anticipate him coming to me. Yeah. Whose chip is it? Have to go pick it up. Northern time. Tree Service, right? No. This no. Is oh. Gems. Gems. The oh, same. oh, this Not is the other guy. Right. Okay. Northern is the bid that we have. Okay. Okay. You're right. You're right. Right. The, that's from the, that's the FERCOG contracted rate, correct? No, right. no. All right. Let me, let me explain the contract. It's two FERCOG. We bid a lot of our services through FERCOG, but it is with the town of Conway. FERCOG, it's not a FERCOG bid per se. It's I see. But they we they, use uh, the FERCOG to do our a, bidding. It's a big multi-town bid Correct. at a big multi-town contract, and we get right. we're, we're entitled to our appropriate okay, so. of what we put in for what we right. Want to bid. Okay, so. Can I, can I just interject here for a minute? I just want to sum up my understanding. And it's like, and I'm going to end it I'm, after my understanding is, so Ron is telling us that 
an additional person is 50 grand. Does that include uh, Benny's? No. No. So you got to add another probably. It's 75. Huh? 20%. I'd say 75 because the benefits are, are yeah. pretty. Yeah. Unless you're, okay. unless you're employee, then it's salary one third, benefits two thirds. <laughs> Where the hell is that? <laughs> going to the FERCOG meetings and voting on their budget. <laughs> okay. Well, the point is, I don't think that it's that. I mean, Ron, do you really want the freaking headache of this? This is a headache. Right. Ron is not asking to hire another person here. I mean, that's that's a whole different discussion. I don't think we should be having that here, right? And we, we not just... Asking for that. He's we, not asking for that, right. Uh, we're we're we, talking about we just it, did but... hire another person five minutes ago. <laughs> we did. I know. But <laughs> that's, <laughs> but that's because that's an opening that, that he's yes. finally filling, and it's yes. only temporary. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. What I'm trying to say here is, I don't think there's that much of a difference between buying it and doing the stuff ourselves. Okay, even though it's not going to be delivered for a year or a year and a half, versus contracting it out. It probably costs a little more to contract it out. Uh, because it's, they, they got to make a profit, but that's, you know, I, 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 so you have to, you know, is the, does Ron have the bandwidth? Does he have the time uh, to do this stuff? And does he want to do this stuff? It's all, it's almost, I mean, think about it. If you can pick up the phone and say, Hey, um, you know, uh, North, Northeast tree, uh, we, we had the storm. Can you clean this thing up? And they'll say, well, yeah, after everybody else is cleaned up. I'm sure they'd say that, but the, the fact is, I, I just think you should look good and hard on it, because, hard about it, because it's 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 deceptive. And the instinct is always to want to do it yourself. I mean, that's the instinct. Why? Because you know you could do it better. Because you don't have to deal with the third party. Because it's a pain in the neck. But on the other hand, these services exist for a reason because they do fill a need. So that's all I have to say. I'm really not. Here, here's something to think about, Roy. Huh? No matter what, it takes manpower to hire somebody. They don't know our roads. They don't know you. you, okay. you physically have to, what needs to be done. I get it, Ron. I get it. Okay. I do get I'm it. just saying. I get it. You mean even when you go to Northern Tree, you have to hold their hand too. Yeah, well, that's what he said. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <And> then, <laughs> Then you're in a fighting battle with them. For what? I'm not. Hey, I'm not looking forward to this new process. Right. right. We understand. Yes. However, maybe they, may, maybe they could take do the process also. They could do so, it. The hearings and stuff. And our capital committee did, but we're even getting more information now. What well, you know? The, the we we support buying the chipper. And you have a good workaround of how to get through the next year or year and a half until the chipper arrives. That I don't know where that money's going to come from, but that's not the capital equip capital committee's worry. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I don't think this changes our vote on the right. purchase of the um, chipper or the trailer right box, the chip box for the chipper. Right. Um, the new question is, do we continue with the rental of the current or go with services so i guess the, the other question would be do you believe that um this type of service going out cutting or, or chipping cutting down trees that we would do this more than once a month four days a month is what, what it says here so i, I do no, know no no, no, no. What, like, you're, like, saying, you're not understanding what's happening here when a tree falls down I'm being told that I have to clean that tree up within a I certain amount of time. No, I get we that. We don't know when the trees fall. No, I know that. But on average, would you say that would be more than once a month? Most definitely. Okay, so that's what it's, I'm getting at. Sometimes two or three times a week. Because I'm just if, assuming that if a tree, once a week would be, a, if I had a tree come down, that as long as I got it cleaned up within a week, right. that I probably wouldn't be getting people's feathers right? the reason i'm saying that is because if a tree fell down tomorrow and we called northern tree to come out and do it it's eighteen hundred dollars for a day correct right Twenty-four thousand for to rent the chipper that you're currently using on the manpower that currently exists Twenty-four thousand, eighteen hundred. that's 13 times so that's why i'm saying it so if we're 
So if I had to call Northern in once a week for six months. If you called them more than once a month, every month this uh, of the year, it will cost more than us just running that shipper Correct. is what I'm getting at. So yeah. I would personally say, let's keep, let's take that deal, rent the chipper. But basically those, those types of deep dive operational things, we like, I always like leave them to the department heads to run their department as they see fit and make those, they have a budget, they have goals that are set forward right. by the select board and how they achieve those goals is up to them. Um, but we should squeeze that budget <laughs> as much well, as we can, right? I mean, uh, yeah, well, that's what... Uh, you then? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so the... the um, the, the, So related to this, the Article 6, the paying the $970 from a prior bill for log and brush removal. Um, that was a, a mistake on the contractor. Was that Potter? Yes. Okay. For not getting up. Okay. Invoice kind of on me for not going after it, but it happened in January and it kind of got away. And there might be a difference of opinion as to whether or not an invoice was sent in a timely fashion, but that doesn't really matter. If the service is rendered. Right. And, and I never and, received an invoice until July or August. Right. Um, all right. And I so, apologize for that, but, but you know, it's one of those things that kind of got away and totally forgot it all. So, to me, this was a great discussion. I mean, more information comes out every time we talk about it, and we're going to have to have this discussion somehow in front of and, the town. And that nine hundred seventy dollars—that was one big day's work of one tree, right? I think it was more than more one than day. one day. All right. Um, well, then the other the so the the chip box. The chip box is uh, you like the uh, that's a necessity. If you're going to buy the chipper, know, you need to put it in with the same with the chipper. I mean, it should have gone as one article. Can't we still combine them? Into we certainly may yeah, if I think you we want. Should. Yeah, I mean, you, just yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, can't have one without the other. Ninety-nine thousand okay. for a new chip. Ninety-nine, ninety-two thousand for a new chipper, and seven thousand for a new chip box for a total of ninety-nine. Well, the only thing that might be an issue there is. If the chipper didn't get approved, the chip box would still be very beneficial to us. I'm sure you could probably get the chip box a lot quicker than the chipper too, right? Yeah. So maybe we can keep it okay, separate. Keep we can separate. separate. We can keep it separate. Okay. But at the at the in Article Four, at the end of the box, the, the at the end of it, instead of a period after box, you should have the words for the highway department period. Okay. And I should spell then, department properly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, highway endearment. <laughs> highway endearment. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's it for the. That was it for the capital. Yeah. The select board won't be voting until next week. Do you have any other questions? Um, oh. So you can close the uh, Capitol oh, yes. meeting and meeting in great. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it's a motion, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. adjourn our Capital Improvements Committee meeting. Uh, uh, I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Nice job. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank good you, night. everybody. Yeah. Good night. Bye bye. Good to see you guys. <laughs> you too, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, boy. Thank I think you. you're always gone. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Good night, John, boy. <laughs> <laughs>
Article eight, that should be submitted by town administrator and police department. Okay. Because that is, and certainly Chief Wimet will be asked to speak to it. Sure. Article nine is fairly incomprehensible, <laughs> but uh, I don't know where she got the wording from that. Uh, stuff like that is problematic if you read it and you don't understand what it means. I was gonna ask yeah. if we were gonna do a con- uh, Yeah, I, like, I think yeah. we should, I, I can yeah. just, I'll, I'll talk to Lee and okay. have her like explain the- to me in plain English. Thank you. <laughs> Especially in today's conspiracy atmosphere. And Article 10 that requests special legislation providing for the recall, is that, is it, I mean, that's a really ge- generic. Oh, that one, I, I, I need to run that by, uh, all right. town, I haven't even run this by town council yet. This yeah. is just a rough draft. Yeah, we need my to do this. supposed to say draft all across it. So. Yeah, yeah. It says okay. Monday, the 10th of December. Instead yeah. Of <laughs> oh yeah, that's, <laughs> Thank you. we don't want that. <laughs> no one's going to show up, maybe we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Anybody have any other comments about? So this is draft, so you, like, to see if the town will vote to appropriate from any available sources. That's the new language that we're going with? That's, that was what I discussed with uh, Mike Chella. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Because we can't raise an appropriate. Yeah, yeah. So, and. But you can't but blink your eyes and make it different. appear. In, in the motion, we'll put down the source, so. Okay, good. All right. So on to our. Trasha Palooza Part Four. <laughs> Better wake up. I'm looking at my budget numbers. So, um, so with us, we are grateful once again to be in the presence of Jan Amin. It's uh, what your title is. I'm the executive director. Executive director of the Franklin County Solid Waste District. Even though you live in Vermont. Trying not to hold that against you. Um, so, listed on the agenda is mattress price discussion. The mattress thing, yeah. Oh, mattress. Yeah. Oh. I, I was trying to relate this whole sordid mattress saga <laughs> to interested people that really want to comply with yeah. everything. And we all agree that it just makes our brain hurt to even talk about it. Yes. Um, it, it's the and, most convoluted waistband I've ever had to implement. And I've been here for a long time. So, oh yeah, there's dog biscuits. Oh. You, you can reach in and get a dog biscuit. No, no, no. Um, so, you know, the, the DEP in their wisdom created this split program where if, you know, if a mattress meets the recycling standards, it has to be recycled, but if it doesn't, it can still go in the trash. And so it's the only waistband where things can still, it's banned, but it can go in the trash. So that where on, it, that on its face makes no sense. Struggling with yes. this. Um, and, you know, for towns like Conway that have a bulky waste box, but not the recycling trailer, it's really challenging because people have, you know, I was really, I mean, I was thrilled that they gave us five recycling trailers, grants, you know, whatever, $30,000 of equipment. Um, but, you know, it means people in Conway have to. How can we don't have a trailer? Go. We don't have any room for a trailer. Yeah. I, <laughs> so, well, so, so when I applied for the grant in June, I really looked at the, the largest transfer stations that make the most mattresses. And you folks make a fair amount of mattresses, but Deerfield is like, you know, 20, 30 a month. So they have a lot more rental properties. They have a lot, they have a lot more. Well, I don't know where they come from, but they always have a huge pile of mattresses. Yeah. So, um, and they have a huge facility. So what's, do you want to relay your current experience or do you just want to talk about the pricing issue? I, don't, I, what, I mean, I'm happy to hear some 
not happy, but I would be, it's, I would listen to some feedback. Well, it's, the, it's just sad and almost a shame, like the, the amount of detail that our transfer station attendants have to like know and be able to communicate is not really, it's just not sustainable for like any issue. I don't know, like you, you almost can't blame them for getting it wrong mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because mm -hmm. I could have the written policy right in front of me and just the fact that it's what it's five pages, single space, whatever. Yeah. And you know, the, and then you're trying to figure out where this sort of soiled but not really soiled mattress in front of you fits in that's part of it the definitions are so amorphous and right. um, it's not real clear whether what you're looking at exactly where it fits in it's like too much subjective determination i, I agree and, with you um, right is it dirty enough or is it well, yeah and, and it, in um not here it was it was something else that you had sent but but they're my understanding is they're going to do some kind of like spot checking. So like if 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 too many mattresses come out of Conway that should have been recycled, then we get fined for that. And that uh, seems like it places this just incredible burden on the transfer station attendants. I agree. To determine, you know, I mean, I, it, it, yeah. it seems like if they really wanted to do this, they would just say, no one except mattresses. Here's the one, you know, mattress recycling facility, and have someone from the DEP, like, right. you know, be responsible for. But, but then your waste haulers decide to charge you different rates for for whatever, yeah, so, and so yeah, you so have so to tell me, so all, the mattresses then. can only go to one of the rent, and yeah, that's a whole I, other thing. I know. Well, like, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, so here's here's kind of here's where we're at. Here's what's happened. We had this really great pro, not really great, but we, you know, I figured out a program. We got the trailers in place. We talked to everybody. Like, okay, if it's really if it's wet or moldy, it can go in the bulky ways. But you know, so we thought, okay, we 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 have this covered, right? Um, and people, it's still a pain. I mean, people from Row have to drive to Colerain, you know, so they're like way up on Zor Road and to think, are they really going to drive to the Colerain transfer station? But, yeah. Anyway, so you folks fortunately just have to go to D. It's not that far to Deerfield. Far enough. Um, so I had asked in the beginning of October for information about those soiled, moldy mattresses that can legally go in the bulky waste box. <laughs> what do the disposal facilities need? Do they need the attendant to warn them it's coming? Do we, do, you know, how do what do we have to tell them? Um, there was no information about yeah they want and they want notice. It was just like oh they raised the price. <laughs> And I think part of what's happening is um, your attendance, DP requires, this is the absurd part of the absurdity, requires that you log every mattress that goes in, you record every mattress that goes into the bulky waste box for disposal. So the attendants have a tracking form. I gave them like 10 copies. They have to write down November 2nd, you know, one mattress moldy. The commercial transfer stations in West Springfield and Holyoke have to do the very same thing, but they're getting hundreds of roll offs a day, right? So I think part of their strategy is we're just going to make the price, we're just going to raise the price so we don't get anything. The problem is they're the only outlet for moldy and wet mattresses. So if they don't take them, what does the EP think we're going to do with them? And I had a conversation with the some the assistant director in the solid waste division on Friday, just saying, this is not like cool. We're getting squeezed here by the disposal facilities. And he's like, oh, I, I didn't expect them to do that. I was like, right. So that's not really <laughs> so, so that's the, the response. So the, <laughs> like, so, the, so, the, so, the, right, so the $75 holy the Casella facility said they were going to charge $75. So I instructed waste management never to send a load there. Um, we pay it's the same tip fee no matter where it goes. I'm like, we don't want to send any loads there anymore. Um, because we can't we can't pay seventy five dollars mattress at the start. The other facility I think has been right along charging forty dollars a mattress, but our contract price with waste management was thirty five dollars, and that set three years in advance. Like you know when they when we go out to bid, they have to tell me they have to tell me in twenty twenty what the mattress price is going to be in twenty twenty two. So they put thirty five dollars. I think they're paying forty dollars, and so now. This is an opportunity for them to say, oh, by the way, um, if it's a mattress, a dirty mattress or a moldy mattress, now you have to pay $40. So I let, it was probably a mistake to let Towns know, because I let Towns know, and then Conway and Colerain raised the price. And I was like, no, it has to be the same price. 
Um, and the reason I would like everybody to have the $35 price is because it puts your, so if you're charging 40 or $45 a mattress for a dirty mattress, but a clean mat, a, a mattress in Deerfield is $35. It's not gonna take long for residents to figure, well, I'm just gonna go to Deerfield because it's 35 in their, in their trash or their recycling. So people are just gonna be like, why would I pay more in Coleray? And I'm just, I mean, Conway, I'm just gonna go to Deerfield or, that was um, our thought too. <laughs> Coleray, right. So, but I'm not sure Deerfield wants Conway moldy mattresses. They want recyclable mattresses. Mm -hmm. So we get into this thing where now attendants are having to argue with residents who say, this is a $35 mattress, not a $45 mattress. Um, yeah. And we just, and, and I have, you know, I'll be in Coleray next week because they did the same thing. They were like, we're, it's going to be $45. And I was like, oh my God. So, my preference would be that we, we and I talked to Veronique about this, that we just, everybody stick with $35. If you pay $40 a mattress and it becomes like many, many, many $40, it's only $5 a mattress, um, then I'm willing for the solid waste district to, to subsidize the cost of mattresses through the end of the fiscal year. Because what I would like to do is just get a handle on what we're looking at. Um, so if a load goes to Holyoke and they charge $75, I'm not going to charge the town of Conway $75. We'll charge the con we'll charge Conway $35 or $40, whatever. So I don't want I don't want towns to freak out and now raise prices to the point where we have this disparate pricing and people are shopping which town, um, or they just say 45 bucks, forget it, and then you know you find it, Ron picks it up on the side of the road. It's it's starting to get to be real money. You know, you've you have a, a nasty um, box spring and mattress. It's ninety bucks. And that, and you know, when you 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 go you, uh, the driving in Greenfield and seeing the mattress store with a big sign on front that said "brand new queen size mattress, ninety nine dollars." And I'm thinking, wow, seventy five dollar fee to get rid of it at the at the, at the, at the <laughs> right. tipping thing. I'm like, right. like when you're at the point that it costs more or almost as much yeah. to get yeah. rid of something as it does to buy it, then that's right. pretty nutty. Yeah, it is. Um, it's totally nuts. So, um, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. This whole program has been kind of a nightmare and I'm just trying because we're, because we're working 17 towns together, 19 towns together um, to try to do this regional effort. And my, my preference, my idea would be that every town has the same pricing at $35. And then we kind of see, well, what does it look like in December and how many, you know, did, did Conway ship four mattresses in a bulky waste box. Okay, well, that's 20 bucks that you did collect, right? Um, or, you know, is it 15 mattresses? Well, then the solid waste district will look to compensate you for some of that. I mean, we we can afford, we can afford the $5 to a certain point to just kind of even it out and get this program going. And that would be my preference, would be to chip in and and just have things at a, at a level playing field in all communities. Um, I mean that that makes perfect sense, but so we, I mean the program itself is it's not nuts. is not workable. No, it's not. It's like it's not workable. It's not possible, even in the best faith, to perform faultlessly. Right. Um, I agree, and like, so and so you know I and the well the, so the other thing that I mentioned to um, John Fisher at DEP is that <clears throat> K and W the disposal the the transfer station in in um, West Springfield made it sound like they were just going to be, you know, mattresses that got in there by mistake. The, 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 and, and I said to him, I'm not sure that the commercial facilities really understand that, that they are allowed to still take these, you know, moldy, wet, nasty mattresses. Because if they're saying, you know, if one errantly, I think they were saying like, if there is, a, if there's an errant mattress, I'm like, well, it's not errant, it's <laughs> intentional, you know, like we have the legal right to put it in there. Um, so there's just. As well as the fact that you could be putting a clean one in, it gets rained on and all of a sudden it's moldy and nasty. Right. Like. Yeah. So, and you know, I don't, I mean, I don't know because today's the first day. Um, I don't really know what the disposal facility is going to get. I don't know what they're going to look at. Um, Montague had a really disgusting mattress and I followed up with the attendant because I get, so the, the details of my job is yes. I require the waste management driver to actually take a picture of mattresses so that 
we know we're getting charged for things that are really in our loads because these facilities are ginormous. Yeah. So you have trucks dumping, you know, there's yeah. three bays, they're dumping, dumping, dumping. And the person in the bucket loader sees a mattress and he's like, oh, it's from that truck. But it might've been from that truck. And so I started a while ago requiring photographic evidence. I want to make sure that those three mattresses came out of Conway's box. I've wondered about so that. So the Does drivers it... don't really like me for it because I won't pay the bill. I won't pay. I'm like, if I don't have a photograph showing that came out of Conway's box, I'm not paying for it. So, so I think, um, I don't know where I was going with this, but so, so I, oh, so I got a notice today that Montague had a mattress in their box. And so I emailed the attendant and I said, did somebody dump this in after hours? And he goes, no, that was like the disgusting, that mattress smelled so bad I couldn't even get near it. So, so I will get, um, I get an email with a ticket that says, you know, X number of mattresses from Conway or Deerfield in the bulky waste and then see the picture. And so I will follow up to make sure that that was really an intentional um, for now, like was that intentionally put in um, and did that, you know, did that mattress be kind of the wet, moldy, nasty, um, uh, uh, whatever criteria. So, but you know, for, I don't mean I don't really know what to tell your attendants uh, and the and the attendants in the other towns that don't like Leverett. Same thing, Leverett doesn't. They have a lot of mattresses, and you know, everybody. What I keep saying is, we're just doing the best we can. And I mean, this when I talked to the attendant in Montague today, he said I couldn't even get near that mattress. It smelled so bad. Um, so it was, that was like a clear, this cannot go in the recycling trailer. This is trash. I did reach out as well to, to DEP and, and, you know, let them know that in essence, this waistband, um, is falling on the shoulders of all the transfer station attendants. They're, they're the ones who have to enforce this between the, and I asked them if they had some kind of video or something that we could, you know, here's what a, you know, a good mattress looks like this is what it you know just because visually I think that really helps but at the moment they don't have anything but they did send those frequently asked questions and stuff like that so you know so I think for tonight what I would ask is that is that the price go back to $35 so we can just all be at the same amount and so, if you and if you so moved. thank you so moved. <laughs> is there a second second all in favor Aye. 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 Me too. Thank you. So it's unanimous. Yeah. So that was the that was the long one. What I don't know what's on your list. Ah. What else? What discussion else on transfer station options for special town meeting. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, which is going to work out great. It really is. It's going to restore your faith in small town democracy. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> um. And you know. Just the note, since we've been discussing this so publicly, the number of people that come up to me and, and, and have said, like, glad that we're able to weigh in on this. And we really do want more of the cost to be shifted to the people that use it heavily rather than right now it's 100%, well, 90% property taxes because mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. annual stickers raise $10,000 mm -hmm. out of a $200,000 cost. And um, so that's we have one sort of fully fleshed out option of uh yeah the sticker the the windshield annual permit ten dollars go do the the uh paper throw um with a sliding scale of numbers stickers required based on the size of the trash bag and it costs without sticker a bulk waste fee set up and uh which my best recollection is that that hewed pretty closely to your one of your recommendations or one of your thought processes or whatever. Um, and you know, there, there are there are the, the only thing that I've heard from people is a concern that if you go to the paper throw, there's two people that really feel strongly about this, that it's going to dramatically increase roadside litter. I think, I think uh, frustration with a five page mattress disposal <laughs> policy <laughs> might increase yeah. roadside litter more than. Yeah. And, and yeah, and I, I'm more concerned about mattresses being put on the side of the road now than I am about um, trash. Like we, we, 
just it it doesn't seem to happen i think because people figure out pretty quickly that they can manage with two bags or you know what i've told i mentioned you were at the at that meeting but what i mentioned to folks is you have a universe of stickers so if i need three stickers a week and my neighbor only needs one sticker a week well there's no there's no rules that say i can't use your sticker or i can't use you know like we can't share or trade stickers what you're the goal is to basically limit the universe right. of what the town is paying for what residents are paying for um so what i've seen so i've helped sunderland northfield and irving and row or town switch to a to a page ecosystem irving and row are both are similar to this where they give everybody they give people stickers two free stickers a week I think actually Roe only gives one um, a week, 52. And there's been no feedback that suddenly there's like huge piles of sticks, huge piles of trash. Um, and I think it's because you're giving people, it's not, it's not like you're saying, okay, it's $4 a bag or $3 a bag. You're saying, hey, get your trash down to two, two bags a week. Or if you can't get it down to two bags a week, talk to your kid or your friend and see if you can use some of their stickers or maybe you have to buy a sticker at the end of the fiscal year. Um, so I just, I personally, professionally don't feel like the, the illegal dumping thing is uh, a real, it's not a fear for but, me with this kind of program. So my recollection was that you have, you, like I think you said before that you, you were like a witness to so many towns switching over to this and that that basically has never really happened. That, and that you've heard fears like that Right, everybody will before. say, right. And I would say, I'm more afraid of mattresses going on the but so, than, so, I am of, than I am of you folks implementing this program and suddenly there being a huge part. I, I really, like half a percent of me, half a percent, maybe it could happen. But for the most part, I don't think it does. So, and, and like, you know, see, seeing as the only real, op, the, the only real coherent statements in opposition to going to paper throw were the fear of roadside litter, that um, I thought it would, you know, that if, if you are coming, um, that it would be valuable to have you there just to sort oh, of yeah. a witness to towns doing, towns doing that transition to say that, no, that really hasn't happened, even in towns where we know all the people are gross and disgusting and going to litter anyway, not like Conway. Um, <laughs> well, um, I, I can also say yeah. that in, in South Hadley, I was in charge when we switched over to a, a green bag program and we did not have an increase. Yeah in any dumping whatsoever it, yeah so it's like the people who are doing it are already doing it like what ron picks up on the side of the road is not our is not from people going to the transfers right like if they're going to do that they're going to do that that's that's been my experience if that's their kind of the way they move through the world that's what they do and yeah so, i mean i feel like i people have expressed concern to me about people burning trash i mean like it would never occur to me to start suddenly burning like you know people who burn trash they're doing it already you know so it's not <laughs> i don't think yeah. it's something that people are suddenly going to think about and, and i and i think you know it's a change and people have not everybody but people have taken advantage of the system you have which is 100 percent free um and you're the only town in the county that doesn't have some system to regulate what goes to the transfer station we've talked about this before so my experience is people get you know like they get uptight um and then they figure it out you know in a month they're like and i mentioned this last time this person in northfield was vehement she was anxious oh gosh like really unkind and she called me like a month and a half later and she said i just want you to know that this is great. Like, I didn't think I, like, now I only make, you know, one bag of trash a week and I never thought I could do it. And so it's just really a mindset, like people don't want to change. And then they're kind of have to, they have to look at what they're throwing out. And suddenly they realize, oh, I don't need to make four bags of trash. I can make two. Um, you know, when you, when you narrow the possibility, people tend to find a way to meet that. So I think, you know, and I've, we've had uh, in, in email exchange about this, my, my experience is that nobody, I've never seen a town meeting in any town um, approve this program. And not because people, you know, some, because there's a core group of people who think, yeah, we really need to control our trash. And then most people just feel like, let's just give everybody one more year. Let's tell people, to, I mean, I've seen this over and over. 
the vote is always, let's just try to make less trash. And so you go another year and the people who are already trying to recycle, recycle, and all the people who are inviting their friends and neighbors and you know relatives from wherever are still doing it because they just figure everybody else is gonna recycle. So I would love it to happen, but I have probably about a 3% belief that Conway is going to be really that side bet when it, when it happens, side side bet, bet, when it happens, you're buying us all beer. So I don't know how, I don't know. I mean, I looked at your thing. I don't know your options. Yeah. So I think we might be on different uh, pages when we, what we want to bring to town meeting and not. So everything above that says proposals for town meeting, everything above that, I think we should implement into the new fiscal year. It doesn't change the cost. It only helps regulate the amount of trash coming into the transfer station. So there is no cost change. There shouldn't be really any argument with um, with the town about that. Because like I said, the, the main issue that we have right now is we think trash is coming from outside Conway or that people aren't really committing themselves to recycling or using less waste. The proposals for town meaning are more about how do we, we're never gonna get cost neutral how can we get closer to it, right? So that's what I think we should bring to town meeting is saying, okay, you know, it's $20,000, $200,000 a year um, for our trash disposal. We're only getting 10,000 at the moment. You know, we might be able to reduce that cost by reducing the trash intake, which we could do with all these proposals above, but it's still gonna be an exorbitant cost as opposed to what we're actually bringing in. So then where do we go? Do we increase the cost of the permit? Do we decrease the amount of stickers that people can have per permit? Or do we continue to absorb those costs into our real estate taxes? See, I think the everything above the 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 the, the proposal, whatever the, the the your the main proposal is going to significantly alter the cost structure because it's going to reduce significantly the amount of the waste that we have to pay to haul. Right. So uh so that, uh, you know, that whatever, $10,000, right, you know, in sticker, whatever, in, in sticker revenue is uh, right now, it's 10% of our budget. But when you eliminate, I don't know how much. 40, typically 40%, Irving dropped 40% of their trash tonnage. So, so then wow. like right away that yeah, becomes 20% or more. So you're, you're already like. The, to, it, that already massively altered which is the goal the, the math oh, okay. right and um you know that the, my so like that's kind of what we that's kind of the goal like when we set out what the goals were is to reduce the amount of trash and um to make it fairer like uh this still has all of the costs being borne by general taxation correct um and that, that, that is, you know, no matter what you do, it's, it is what we wanted to address that it's that the cost should be borne to some extent by the users. And especially since we know that there are something like 25 families or 25 permit holders that are responsible for an outsized percentage of the total pound poundage of waste. And, um, and the same thing with the bulk storage thing. There's just a small number of bulk storage, uh, bulk waste users that are responsible for filling that up. Right. And it's, you know, the, the, how do we make it so that those heavy users in particular, because the more and more, there's so many people in town that don't you that, that are one bag per month people, or there's a lot, it's a whole zero bag, zero bag movement that I've been approached about and it's really big in certain streets. It's spreading in town. Um, I, know, I and, truly believe with the amount of stickers I'm proposing here based on the size of the bags, over 90% of our users won't spend more than the $10 that they're used to a year. Um, the, only, the only things on here that aren't uh, automatic as far as you can't use the stickers for are of course the, the mattresses we just discussed and bulk waste and who is really using bulk waste 
one thing I should have put on that thing I sent out about transfer station issues um, was the concern about certain businesses that might bring in or farmers and stuff that might bring in a huge amount of plastic and just so we'll have to make sure that um, this system does something and I'm sure Jan can give us some advice on this. I mean, if they, if they have to put it into a contractor bag and pay for it, you know, that, that right there might start limiting that massive influx from just a few. Right. So it'll take care of an, and I, I'm trying to say it's, it'll take care of an additional problem that I hadn't even mentioned before. <laughs> and another big thing I have bolded and underlined on here, no construction mm -hmm. debris. That'll take, care of a huge issue as well that the transfer station employees have been telling me about. Mm -hmm. So right. yeah, I mean I, you know, businesses should get um they should just have dumpsters. And I know farmers, it's really hard because they have all that bale wrap. And we used to recycle the bale wrap and then our program fell apart. Farmers have so, such narrow margins every so, year too. It's you something know, like that. It's that's kind of that's kind of tough. But the reality is it's it's business generated waste. And so you have to decide that. I mean, I know there's a there's a big business in town that brings in a lot of lamps all the time. And I'm like, oh my God, how did you guys get so many light bulbs? They should be, and the town's paying for them. You know, so the question is at what point do you want to make it a residential facility or have a business permit? I mean, some towns, not a lot, but uh, I think Warwick has like a $75 a year permit for businesses who want to bring in, you know, trash and recycling, not construction waste but maybe maybe the farmer comes in and but pays more for it um i don't know i i, but the, I mean the, it's it's it, it we have you know one one restaurant that does have their own dumpster does the does the inn have their own dumpster does he have, no, no barb separates yeah. everything out yeah it takes it up um yeah. and and i know the one the one person that does you the one restaurant owner that does have a dumpster is always just you know i'm doing my part how come nobody else is? And that you know, we have two two commercial horse stables in town, and you know, they come with flatbeds of stuff. They're, they're and, using the transfer station. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, well, right. and, and it's so just like, because, but but because they're they businesses, could, they, and because they could and they can, and so I, you know, I'm not saying they should or they shouldn't. I don't. I mean, I don't think they should, but you know, it's really up to the town what you want to give a what you want to allow and most towns restrict it to res it's residential waste that's what the that's what the transfer station is paying for i mean business, it's a residential facility is not a commercial facility so businesses will pass any extra cost on to the consumer they always will mm -hmm. um I, I i i i do feel for the farmers that's the whole separate thing because they are locked down this cost on a lot of a lot of their their products but I think the vast majority are, you know, contractors, building contractors that are charging their customers, taking that money and then coming to our transfer station for free to dump it, I'm just pocketing the money. So why, why the July 1st? I mean, you can implement this any, is it just because of convenience? You don't want to do mid-year? I mean, Irving did theirs like in the middle of the year. Well, we could institute it at, at any time. We don't we don't have to wait for I mean, it's a little bit tricky because you're you'd have to we'd have to come up with the system to get the stickers out to everybody and it would be yeah. half a year of stickers, you know. You could, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, when does our January. current um our current permits when the decals when do they expire? Not until June 30th. Yeah. So but I will say that I believe we have a number of complicated issues that we should sort out first. You know, so if the select board decided to adopt this, then I would say that, you know, you and I could talk about all these issues and bring some proposals to the select board right. to choose which, you know, in terms of the, the money issues, how many stickers we give out, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. permits, I mean, you mm -hmm. know, so there's, there's a lot of sticky wickets, I think, that need to be taken out. Well, I just, you know, my, my um, role here is to help you yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever you whatever you decide however you decide it or however the, whatever the residents decide is to help you so you know I would get the public education material together for you and help you design I have a sticker design and sticker company that makes them and sheets and we could you know I, I so that it, that process could happen you know talking 45 days 
60 days, things could be. So, so you don't have to wait until June 30th. It may be cleaner because then you can give out these stickers and people come pick up their permit and get their, you know, I mean, they, they pick up, they pay for their permit somehow and get their stickers. But I guess one question is possible. One question would be um, one thing I added to here, I didn't think about until the last moment was limiting one windshield decal per household, right? Because I don't want someone who has three vehicles to get 300 some stickers. So you can't I, do I, that though. How, how would you do that? You can't. It, yeah, well, it depends on how the, the, the stickers for the trash get given out. These are some of the sticky wicked issues. That, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what you could do is um, households could have more than one permit, mm -hmm. windshield permit, but they would have, but it would be based on their, um, their address. So they would only, that household or the household would only get one packet of stickers. So it's, it's really, it's really one packet. One, one set of stickers per household, not per permit necessarily. And you know, it's funny that the one day that I that I did the volunteer transfer station attendant thing, got four phone calls in the hours that I was there. Two of them were people that had one permit, window, windshield permit, mm -hmm. that were going on vacation with their cars and wanted some sort of temporary right for their kid's car to have like a two week permit on the windshield with so that, and then when they couldn't come, but whatever. And, and I would be like, are you kidding me? It's $10, just come in and get another sticker. Just, yeah, um, yeah. But that, so that, yeah. that, that you would bring it up, but th there's so many different types of situations like that, that everybody goes through that like you can't new thing, like have stickers anyway, so it won't matter. Well, they no, they would still technically need a permit. For and they would need they, a decal. Right? Oh yeah, no, no, yeah. no, we have to have the the permit right. on the, and it has to be where the attendants can see it. So, um, I have I don't know the date off the top of my head, but I have it in my it calendar. December tenth, okay, Saturday 10th. at ten a.m. Okay, and that's we'll fine. we'll have you out for lunch. Otherwise, people will get hungry and they'll start rioting. Yeah. Um, so give me a sense of angry. what the what the I I know you had said they could vote on different options. So are there different are there different choices on the sticker program or different choices on the well i think what chris is yeah. suggesting is that we just we just make this policy yeah i'm not in favor of that at all no because <laughs> <laughs> I, I you know we I, what i like doing is saying announcing at town meeting that we're going to be doing this no matter like that this is part of it but that it's really important that this is so this is the primary interface that people have with their town government and when you're talking about changing that relationship in a significant way that you get people's consent and it's it people are, are reasonable about this and like i'm really um i feel really like uh, i'll bet i'll bet people that this will pass so let me ask a question i mean i'm new to this so i just have to ask let's say we do bring this up as a proposal for the town to vote on and the town votes it down then where are we at um that's where that's you know that's where we remind everybody that this is that it's the select board is not bound by this decision that we're that the select board voted to approve these options okay. if town meeting if town meeting agrees to it and that if not that we're going to be responsible and do the right thing and Would, uh, wouldn't but, it make more sense then to do that as a public hearing sorry that rather than i yeah i, I, right. I just feel like that's a little disingenuous to give people just say you know vote on this and then if it's <laughs> and then it doesn't go our way we say haha we're still going to do it anyway we just i mean it just seems like a really big gamble and and and, and it wouldn't be done in good faith you know i mean to to give people the option to weigh in and then knowing that right if you say really, no, we're going to do it anyway, we're going to do that anyway. yeah it's, it's kind of like you should just well you announced that, you that up front anyway. you announced that up front but that um but that they're oh, different okay. That there are different, you know, that th th as a concept, we'll be doing this anyway. That there will be per bat, you know, a pay per throw thing added to our process. That, but that it can be either this way, it can be increasing the permit, it can be um, decreasing the number of stickers, uh, or it can be with reduced hours. 
Like those are sort of four so, options. So we tell people that we're going to pay for throw and, but then we have to give them, you know, choose these. Yeah. I mean, so what, what are they, what are they deciding on then? The cost of the sticker? How many stickers? I mean, it doesn't seem like if, if we're moving to paper throw, it doesn't seem like there are really that many options. Well, the, yeah, it's, whether whether you increase the permit fee from ten to fifty dollars or or something in between, whether you decrease the number of free stickers to generate more revenue, um, uh, you know, it's just ha See, that's what I was trying to propose is say, hey, this is going to be a paper throw. Um, we're not showing increasing the cost of what you're currently paying. We're just telling you you're regulated to how much trash you can actually dump. Right. But here are some other options. Right. Should so we raise the decal to 50? Should we decrease the number of stickers we're having on this um, proposal? Or should, you know, that that's what I So I, I would think all of the proposals should be mostly this mm -hmm. with the the wrinkles that differentiate between four different ones. And that, but that, um, and you know that 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 what we didn't really talk about is what really convinced me was the the difference in statistics between Deerfield and Conway, both from the number of you know when um, and, and all that, that that's that's nuts that we're obviously obviously disposing of a lot of Greenfield uh, Deerfield's waste. That's what I would like for the meeting to bring up right. is to show them how much we're right going. and and so I think I'm, I'm actually you know circling back to what Veronique said is um, it it feels to me that this is not a town meeting vote decision, but it's a public meeting and not even a public hearing. But, you know, we have in other towns, the, the select board or the board of health has made the decision, okay, we're going to the system, everybody's going to get, uh, it's a modified pay as you throw, you're going to get so many free stickers. And then you make, you make that decision and then you have a meeting and you invite and everybody comes out and you say, okay, Let's hear what you think. What do you, you know? How many people think they we, we should only give out one sticker a week, fifty two, and how many? And so you let the community make that decision in a public meeting, but not in a town meeting. Which, to me, and I've had this conversation with Phil, is like, if if you have a a vote, I don't know how the select board can then say that's a legal vote of town meeting, but we're going to do what we want anyway. It's like you're. I just know how you do that. I feel like you're bound by that legal vote. Um, um, no, so, you'd be really so. My, so my and my 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 answer to that is that be really upfront that that this election is um, non-binding on the select board, but that the select board has voted to accept these four answers or the, these four right. options and will be bound by it, and that if you decide to do something different, there's no guarantee that the select board will be bound by it. That's all. And that that's yeah. a, a, a intellectual yeah. framework yeah. that and that our where you know the the town meeting is uh, is the public meeting that the public actually shows up at, and that it's it means a lot to people that to ask them to vote on something besides money, and which is all anybody ever gets to vote at, and yeah. and um, and if we're going to ask them to vote on it, then ask them to vote on it, and you know, but this is how it has to go because. Uh, the, the the data and the math and everything else says we need to do pay per throw, uh, mm -hmm. and that yeah. that's just the way it is. So well, let, I, I hear different things, and it's uh, not you know I'm yeah. just I'm just the messenger here, so I'll but, step back out. Um, I'm just I'm a little right. confused because I think I've heard every select board member approves of this proposal. Did I mishear that? No, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, so that is something that the board could, if you all agree that that's the way it should go. And then if I understood you correctly, Chris, you were saying that the, at town meeting, it would be those four things or whatever. Well, we go on the clicker. This is just an example, yeah. But mm -hmm. the way I saw it is here's all the issues we have at the transfer station. Us as a select board can implement this pay or, or this this portion of it to take care of some of the issues outside waste coming from outside Conway people dumping things they shouldn't be dumping construction waste from companies that shouldn't be dumping them there that takes care of a lot of it and like Phil said hopefully it reduces the cost of the transfer station by maybe 25 30 percent over time we're still spending a lot more money than than we're getting in 
for the transfer station. Do we want to address that? Those are the questions. That's the question I want to ask town. Do we want to address how much money we're actually spending off of our taxes to the transfer station? Or do we want to say, uh, no, let's consume that with their, or let's take some of that cost with the consumers and either increase the permit and decrease the amount of bags so you have to pay for more trash that you're dumping. That's my idea. Mm -hmm. I, I'd be interested to see how that played out. I don't know, how quickly, Jan, do you see when these changes get made, how quickly do you see the changes in the numbers? Like, is that something that we could track for six months and then come back and then bring it back to, to the public and say, okay, now we have the new numbers because we've done a, a modified pay as you throw. So now we know how much trash tonnage is coming in and, you know. I, I know weekly we get the weight slip. So, I mean, if you implemented this program on February 1st, then first time that trash dumpster goes out, I would know what your weight was compared to December, January, mm -hmm. you know, November. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, what you will see is a huge, you know, if you're doing eight tons a week, as soon as this program is, is put out to the community, you're, you're just gonna see, you know, 15 tons, you're, everybody's gonna dump as much as they can in the, in the two weeks before the program implements. And then suddenly you'll just, you'll be like, well, where all the trash go? Um, so, but I guess so I just so, want to warn you, you're going to get, you're going to get, yeah. a, you're going to get a slug yeah. of trash in but, a couple of weeks before, but, but I, I would know that, you know, as soon as that within two weeks, we could start tracking how much. Okay. Reaction. So I, I guess my point is, is that, um, and, and if, that if you want to go to town meeting and ask them then, okay, how do we shift the burden to the user as opposed to the taxpayer? You might want to have the numbers ahead of time. No, that's what I was saying. I do want those. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so in other words, I think doing this at town meeting before you've even started a program might not, if it's for a special town meeting, you're going to be making, asking for decisions based on, you don't know what it's going to be yet. Yeah. You, you see what I mean? Because we, we won't have the numbers yet because the program hasn't been instituted. So if, if they said, okay, we increased the permit to 50, but you might not need that. Do you see, do you see what I mean? Right. We know right now yeah. we would need 200. Yeah, right, exactly. Right? exactly. So 50 seems like yep. a pretty, I mean, 50 still seems like we'll be way under. But it's also, it's but it makes up. It's it. also, it's okay to have property taxes bear some of the burden. I mean, we, oh, don't, for sure. we don't want to go from 190% to zero. Um, They're already okay. taking a lot of the burden, but that still comes down to it's a consumable tax. It's like who, like I said, I think 95% of our town. It won't pay more than a dollar or more than this ten dollars that they pay today on a permit it's the people that are dumping way more trash than anybody else that should have to bear the cost of that extra trash yeah it's tricky isn't it it is very tricky and, well and I, I, you know I, I think i think you know again to just to tell people it, there's a difference between saying okay the select board made a decision this is what y'all have to do um and saying these are the four choices. Each one of these choices includes what the select board decision would have been had it decided. However, um, it is you're shaping the choice. You're, it, you know, some some might say that it's a bit of a false choice, but you're actually just shaping the choice that you want. And and that actually is like a meaningful It's a meaningful difference. And people, that's why I don't want this to be a choice. Well, it would be any. It would be that would be in all four choices. So choice number one would be the decal is ten dollars. Choice number two, the decal is fifty dollars. Choice With number three, the, the decal is ten dollars, but we only accept trash on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, exactly. So, but but it's this plus that. Okay. In all okay. in all of them. Okay. In all of them. And then, it, and, but then four, and then it, but it would really just be three because four is four is what we're already nothing. doing. Yeah, four is do nothing. But if you're going to do that, then I would recommend that you vote to adopt the modified pay as you throw before you go to town meeting, because otherwise you're having them decide on stuff before you have even voted on adopting the program. Yeah, I agree. I think you. I think you'd have to go into the into the meeting having decided that, yeah. and then and then you can say, okay, this is this part, and you know we've decided this because we need to do it and then how do you want the rest of the you know here's the menu of choices give us your feedback on the rest of the menu 
here's the main course. We decided the main course, like Thanksgiving. We're having turkey and what, what are the sides? Um, so, but. I mean, it's, that's probably intellectually honest. I mean, that's kind of what we're doing. So. Well, it's, I mean, I, I, I feel better about that than presenting one thing for them to vote on that we want them to vote on. And mm -hmm. then if it doesn't go away, we say, yeah, yeah. sorry, no. we're doing it anyway. No, that you I'm shape, not comfortable you know, with. Yeah, you, you, shape, you shape the choices so that all the choices work for you. Um, that's all. Yeah. And, and, and people will really appreciate that. Okay. And and so, we and we get to say, hey, you all voted on it, Pusin. <laughs> <laughs> so which is even better. Yeah. So so I can definitely modify this in the first. Um, you know, even removing number one, number one's not going to work. <laughs> really, when it comes down to it, uh, restricting the weak answer. I was going to say like, but so I, I put that as just like a maybe, right? So what I'll do is this will be one proposal. It, the same with fifty dollars. And then the same, either ten or or ten dollars with only fifty two bags or fifty two stickers. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the 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 hour thing is 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 valid though because we are what we do what twenty four hours. We're open twenty four hours a week now. Oh, in combined? No, it's not a complete twenty four. Twenty two. It's a. It's. I think it's around twenty two. So I mean that eight and eight and five. That that's a legit. No, see, uh, that is one thing I did look at and. We are open as many hours as almost anybody, from what I could tell, um, including towns much bigger than us. We're I, open more hours. I actually had asked Veronique, I believe, for what it would save us on um, the employees' pay, and it was very minimal. Well, it's not just that, but it would it would have to save on waste. Uh, on, if you're if you're open less to receive waste, you would have to you would have to get less waste. No, no, I, it all comes in yeah, anyway. I, we would just people wait still longer the trash on Sunday afternoon. Uh, there, there have to be some impact. There has to be some impact. Also, that would be really tough for people working all week mm -hmm. that don't work remote. Yeah, to not have weekend service. It's assuming you know that that there's a modified system, you're going to see less trash. So there's going to be less people. There's just going to be less. So you know, if you cut your trash by forty percent, there's going to be that much less that people are unloading. And so, or is that what you're concerned about? Like it's just busy now. It's too busy now. Do you want to extend the hours? No, it de decrease. Oh, decrease. Look at how it cuts. Yes. Decrease costs. <laughs> where to cut costs? Oh, right. Yeah. So again, that's why I'm saying I that I'd love to see good. how the, if the board voted for this and we implemented it, then I would actually love to see, because every town is unique, how it plays out in Conway before these decisions get made. Because, I mean, maybe maybe it could be done at um, annual town meeting, because by then, if you implemented it pretty quickly, by June, you're going to have some good background numbers to go with to make these I, I just feel it'd be request. kind of messy to try to implement it before the before, before the, the current, fiscal year fiscal, before these current yeah, stickers and, are up. Uh -huh. And it's okay. It's okay to you know we don't have to hit like a you know we can we can say we know that this will move the numbers in this direction and we want to move in this direction mm -hmm. and we know that we don't want the town transfer station to underwrite like or the, the rest of town government. We don't want it to be a profit center. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the two limitations, those are the right, two right. ends of the continuum right. that we're concerned right. with. Yeah. Um, and that, so that, that it's okay, you know, and, um, but yeah, yeah, we could, we should just do it all. Okay. Just so, do it all. Just so I understand, how are we moving forward? Because next week we're supposed to, if we can, vote the warrant. <laughs> so I'll I'll write this up again with a, with an okay. optional service, optional. Okay, with the options. It, it, it will say everything this says here, right? But the decal permit will be a different cost for different options, and the amount of stickers will also be a different. But so then, then, did I understand correctly that the select board would want to vote the policy? You are moving towards modified pay as you throw. Yes. And vote that before the town meeting. And then what you're asking the town meeting to vote on is whether they How want, do you want to that policy to look ten dollars or fifty dollars for right. a sticker. Right. Mm -hmm. Here's your okay. options of the policy. Which one are you yeah. prefer? So on next sure. week's agenda, we need to have you vote mm -hmm. the the program first yes 
and you'd be voting on they would be voting on paying for bulky waste or not paying for it i didn't i didn't see what the uh bulky, what the, bulky waste i have you have to pay for okay which we don't charge now correct we do not well and see that's part of what's what's on, there's an awful lot in here and actually yeah. we didn't even put down the prices for the other items i did not so right so there's just so what i'm thinking is maybe you want to take out the bulky for now because that will come into yeah. play with the prices for um all this just because you know we'd have to figure out how we're going to eyeball that and i've always found bulky waste to be a huge issue for like mattresses very subjective with transfer station attendants they're eyeballing a a flat bag truck and they're trying to figure out how much to charge so so that part i'd rather just see us go with the price list that was proposed before and we'll but maybe that doesn't need to be in this for this i think that suggestion came from that field trip that we took to charlemont proposal. when that guy that guy was singing the praises of this method <laughs> right. as opposed to the way we do it right mm -hmm. and that uh, you know you that they right. charlemont doesn't take bulky waste so what were they talking about i don't know i wasn't there they did have a they don't take bulky no they were talking about so but but um, uh, Shelburne in the same facility does. No, no? They, they don't take They had a scale either. there. They had a scale there for see, cars. See, scale is different, but see, in South Hadley, we had exactly. Charlotte, they talked about, Charlotte I didn't make that up. They talked so about this. Not have a scale that I know. Of I don't know which township it was, but I looked up a bunch of different townships around us. <laughs> right. And this came from one of them. We talked about so this. I, we, we did this in, in South Hadley, and I took it from Northampton when I was in charge there. And I will tell you that it's very, very difficult because somebody comes in with a truck and they've got a bunch of other things that are already different prices. You know, they've got a refrigerator with a tire with a bunch of loose stuff. Yeah, the loose stuff is what I'm concerned about. I understand. Because people are like, well, why would I give up but a what I'm, this is free? I'll just dump it this way. What I'm trying to say is that when you're putting on to the attendance, and I had to do this myself and I hated it, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're trying to eyeball, well, okay, it's in a two and a half, you know, it's in the, it's in the bed of the truck, but you've got other things in there. So you have to have really good spatial, whatever, visual, you know, to be able to say, well, that's really about half the truck that's coming in as well. It's really messy. Mm -hmm. is what i'm trying to say and i'd rather if if it's okay with the board take that out for now and let us deal with that at, at another point um because I, I i think we should have a run through or something this mm -hmm. you well know. if you're not taking if you say no construction debris then what would come in well that's well, the, that's what, what i'm saying on the, on the price, price list it's going to be couches and the and the um, right, your toilets yeah and they're furniture. all priced separately so hopefully yeah. it would be other than the loose wood right mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody might have something, a dresser that got beat, you know, broken up or something. Um, I, I don't know. You know what? That would be a question for the transfer station attendants to tell us more what they're seeing that is not on the price list. I know a guy I can bug. <laughs> <laughs> I see Lori's still on. <laughs> So, yeah, so I think I think the challenge for you folks is, you know, what what does the select board want to take in your purview? Do you want to set the bulky waste? Do you just want to say we have to charge pricing for bulky waste and, you know, we're we're going to look at other communities and figure it out? Or are you going to get resident like where where does the select board end and the residential participation begin? And that's what I'm. Yeah, sensing is a little bit tricky. Well, I'm mm -hmm. just concerned yeah. about like, you know, if, if we if we start asking people how much do you want to be charged for bulky waste, then it's going to be like, well, how much do you want to be charged for toilet? How much, do, I mean, like at, at what point so, should that really be like something that we have, you know, the really the responsibility to set those rates ourselves because, you know. I mean, that's, that's the way I view it is that, you know, we have the price list, which sets all the tires and the, and the you know, all that's including the mattresses. And then you have this different and new idea because we've already had people paying for some of that stuff, but, but now you have a different idea. We're going to give you a way to limit your trash. And I think that's a whole new concept and probably might be easier to just have the discussion if it's just focused on that rather than throwing all these things in the mix because it does get so complicated. Right, we've been talking about it for now. Exactly. 
exactly. It's going to be an endless yeah. town meeting. Yeah. People are going to be like, what do you mean? No, I mean, that's why, that's why you don't want to do it during a regular annual meeting. That's why that's really, um, without this, I don't even know if we'd be having, I mean, I guess we would be, but, um, yeah, we got a bunch but, of stuff on. But, you know, I think, I, I think people are going to really appreciate the choice and the explanation and obtaining their consent. And I think, you know, the, the thing that I've heard for, about for, from you and everyone else is that when the select board or the board of health just did this for like two or three months, everybody in town was pissed. And I think this is going to go a, a long way towards Amelia, this concept of just giving people a choice about how but they I want this to work. I need to be clear, very clear about what the choices are. And since we have to vote this, should be voting this next week, I'm still feeling fuzzy about what exactly it's going to what are the choices we're actually giving to the, the residents? residents. Yeah. Uh -huh. How much is their sticker? Yeah, how much is your sticker going <laughs> to cost? How many stickers are you going to get? Okay. I, th I think if we limit it to those, those two, I think that would be great. Yeah, I think that would be great. I think that's much cleaner. And if we do wait to implement until the new fiscal year, that gives people six months to be really angry before. Yeah. <laughs> And and, uh, and and to be fair, not everybody's angry. That, and I think you've already had, maybe I made this up, but I think some people will say, yeah, I only make one bag of trash. And like, yeah. I, you know, why am I subsidizing? Like, whatever, my mm -hmm. taxpayers, taxes. So I think some people will be on board, happy for it. And I think other people will not be. Um, but I can say confidently that in the end, like, you know, it, uh, across the board in all of the towns within two months like people they figure it out just like everything else like you figure it out here's here's what you get and people figure out how to make it work for them and I think people are genuinely surprised that they can I, my sister you know she lives on the Cape and she just started composting and I've been trying to get her to compost for years in their transfer station in South Yarmouth in Yarmouth or for composting and she didn't want to compost, she didn't want to compost. And, you know, she called me, she's like, oh, we only make one bag of trash. We used to bring three bags to the transfer station. We separate all our food waste. It's amazing. And I was like, I know. So I think people, until they, until they do it, they don't really know what their potential is. Mm -hmm. and, they, and once they start doing that, they very quickly see like, oh, wow, look, I'm making so little trash. Um, I don't have to go to the transfer station this week. You know, I, I think for a lot of people, it just opens their eyes. And when we show people the data between the Conway Deerfield uh -huh. data, like it's it, you can't underestimate how much people in this town resent subsidizing other towns, especially Deerfield, because we have this long history in the school district. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's right. it, where well, it's not just Deerfield; it's Ashfield. It's right, you know, but Deerfield in particular it, because. <laughs> You know, they, okay, they, yeah. they, they, they get, they get, you know, we, we, we agreed to build the school in their, in their district and all their property values go up, but we don't get any credit for that. Right. So things right. like, things like that. So, um, so I'm afraid to ask, was there anything else on the, on the transfer <laughs> station? I don't know what you guys have on your agenda, but. No, this was it. This I was the last we, item. We can talk. Okay. I was going to say, we uh, talked about trash all night, but I'm not sure any of us wanted to. No. I've been dreaming about Trash, literally. I mean, a I've been talking. I've been talking. To, I've been talking to residents like a lot. Whenever I talk to them about almost anything, I've been letting people know that this is coming up. That this is why I think we need to go to the per bag tr sticker thing. And um, I've been surprised at the amount of people that agree with that concept, mm -hmm. and uh, of all different political stripes and everything. So I think, like, I, I'm pretty confident yeah. about this. I am. That's why I want to get people to bet that don't think it's going to work out. I'll bet them. <laughs> and I'll, I'll work on the bulk. Mm -hmm. Basically, the miscellaneous bulk. Whatever is not on that document. Okay. I'll work on the solution for that. Okay, okay. well, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. So Thanks. You're very welcome. I mean, you guys are doing good work. It's hard, you know. The transfer station and trash is always one of those things where you're just weighing... <laughs> Like how to be responsible because it's it's a budget, you know, two hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money in your budget. And sometimes right? being responsible but, is like acknowledging that things have changed. Like this is the way we did it when it cost the town forty and fifty thousand dollars to run a transfer station. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's four times that. 
right? And, and, and ex more expensive. And, get, and absolutely, the trend line is nothing but up. Right. And, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, so it's time to just say, okay, circumstances have changed. Right, right. right. You have to pay attention now. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. you know where to find me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> I, uh, Veronique, I brought a, a, uh, oh, a new, it's a Spanish sign that oh. I must have asked Amy for, and another one of these. We need to, um, it's only got one. Oh, oh right. right. Vote to, uh, 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 move yeah. to adjourn. Oh. Or just oh, okay. the Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for the Kit Kat. <laughs> Take some more for the road. <laughs> No, I should probably stop one. Okay. Um, thank you, Jim. So the the um, what what was the thing in there about the Forest and Trails Committee accepting the Stewart the Climate Management Plan? It was simply an email we got. I'm not sure. I, I guess they just wanted us to know All that right. they had reviewed it and agree with it. All right. So that we do have a ten um, in mail, just so that you know, we do have a tentative date to meet with the DCR commissioner, um, right? And Natalie, mm -hmm. December Monday, December fourteenth. That's a Wednesday, so it would be Monday the twelfth. No, Monday's the fourteenth. No, because Saturday is the tenth. There's the calendar I'm looking at. November 14th is a Monday. Oh, December. December. Oh, December. I'm sorry. I was thinking November. Okay. Yep. That's a Wednesday. Um, yeah, I, I think it's we're just confusing because it hasn't been confirmed yet. So we, there will be a meeting. I it, We were given two dates. So we're hoping that that's... It's got to be the 12th. Be. I, think, I thought it was Monday. Um, whatever. Um, what was the other thing about mail that we wanted to talk about? Well, motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the new uh, website's up.